thank you so much for coming to The Messenger. Once again, I'm The Messenger, and I'm just here to give you wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and revelation on whatever you are facing today. So I'm doing something different. This is a video on YouTube, guys. So I love nature, and I thought this would be really relaxing. Hopefully, you can stay focused because it's, it's so beautiful, but... Um, I promised you guys we're going to talk more about relationships. And this time we're going to talk about co-parenting. I'll give you some advice on what I did. Because I don't have any issues with my exes. I don't have any issues with their current girlfriend, their current wife. And I'm just going to give you some tips on what I did. You know, today we have so many mixed families and i believe that we have so many mixed families today more than ever from when our parents were born especially in my generation in the late 40s generation is because there's a lot of lack of self-control we got so many people that can be in a marriage and some can be even happy and still not be content and happy because they'll see someone else and they want that instead of just being content with what they already have. And what I'm saying right now is biblical. Uh, uh, God wants us to be content with what we already have. And I know that in some relationships, we chose to marry for the wrong reason. You know, a lot of people get together because of looks, beauty, money, um, stability. Um, you know, you were just, um, it was like the right moment for you. I don't know. But we have so many reasons why we get married or we connect with someone or we um, choose to be in a relationship with someone. And a lot of times it's not correct now i'm gonna try to stay on co-parenting but i i like to get to the root and this is the foundation to why uh uh we have a lot of mixed families so basically there's no self-control nowadays there's sex everywhere every time where you turn around there's sex everywhere so it's really hard even if you're married, to keep your spouse alert because we have so much going on. And so I, when I was young, um, my daughter's dad was the first man I've ever been with and I thought we were really gonna be together forever. I, I did not know he had a lust issue. I did not know that he didn't have no self-control. I just know that when he was with me, it was like it was just me. But come to find out that he had no self-control. Um, I tried to stay with it for seven years. No matter what I did, um, nothing I did could stop him. I come to find out that when people have issues like that, that's something that they have to fix themselves. Now, my dad had a lust issue and... I didn't want to be like that. See, that was my choice. So I chose to be faithful. No matter what is being done to me, I chose to stay faithful. Because I know one day, when I do get that right person, I don't want to be that type of person with the right person. So... I went through a lot of heartache, I went through a lot of wrong relationships, but each one, I chose to be faithful. Even, I even chose to retaliate as well, and I regretted it. Um, he cheated on me, he sent his friend to get with me, to test me, and I did it. It was the worst mistake I've ever done. Um, I did it to teach him a lesson, but in the end, it tore me up. So, I'm just letting you know, you can do all the tricks, you can retaliate, you can backfire, but in the end, it hurts you. And that messed me up, and I promised myself I would never do that again. 
So I like to tell you what I went through and what I've done because I want you to understand that I'm not perfect. And I want you to understand I made mistakes and what I chose not to do again and how I conquered it. So yes, I did the retaliation thing one time to pay back, to pay a lesson since he's always cheating on me. And it, I didn't feel good about it. So I promised myself I would never retaliate again. If he wants to sleep around, I just need to get out of the relationship and move on. And a lot of people are not doing that. They're staying in the relationship. You're trying to fix this person who have an issue. And you have to understand this person has to fix themselves to be a better person for your relationship. And everything is their choice. We can't go against their will. We can pamper them. We can spoil them. We can sex them down. You know, you can lingerie him. You can do all kind of exciting things for this guy. And lust is never satisfied. See, you have to understand that lust is never satisfied. It will continue and continue until that person is ready for change. So the best thing for you to do is get out of the situation. Because it will cause you to retaliate. It will cause you both to start cheating on each other back and forth. And all you're doing is digging a ditch for yourself. You're digging a ditch for him. And you're going to end up broken up anyway because nobody has self-control. Until one of you decide. And it's like I said... No one can go against your will. You have to make the decision. That person has to make the decision. And you need to get out of it before you fall into that. How many of you know, hit that like button if I'm in your house. If, I, if I'm, I, I'm in your situation. You know, you cannot change this person. Either you get out. Or you stay there and keep dealing with it until they decide to change and some people do go through things where they do change and they learn a lesson and they're they're good from now on but you see you're taking a chance it's playing russian roulette you're taking a chance i stayed for seven years and he still did not change so to me really three years is too long really a year is too long but you know there are people that are in, in relationships like that that the person do change so, I mean, it's really up to you if you could deal with it. You know, I didn't want to catch an STD. I didn't want to catch AIDS because at the time, AIDS was a big deal. It was big and there was no cure. And, and that's what I thought about. I just couldn't do it anymore. And I didn't want to fall into retaliation. I didn't want to fall into we both cheating on each other because when you fall into that, that will mess you up for the right relationship. And then now you're the cheater in the relationship. So, um, that's the foundation of why we have so many uh, mixed families. And so now you're running into people who have children already. You're running into people, you know, that you're falling in love with and they have a family already and when you 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 can't help who you fall in love with sometimes and sometimes you can and if you love that person a lot of people and this is even in my 20s will fall in love with a woman with children and not like their children I mean you can't do that you can't even be a woman and falls in love with a man and not like his children it's a whole package you see, you can't hate his children and not get involved with his children. See, let me show you something. When I get in, got involved with, um, I was the only one that had children by my daughter's dad. But when I got involved with my ex-husband, my son's dad, and he had a child already, I got involved. Now, here I am, 20 I'm 27 at the time, but that's still young. I'm 27 at the time. He had a child already. He wasn't there like he needed to be. I encouraged him to be in this child's life, to bring her around. Well, well, who?
who's going to keep her while I work? I will keep her. You go to work, I will keep her, you know, to build a family bond. I did that. And this is how we should be nowadays because we are we are falling in love with people that already have families, that already have children. So this is what you're supposed to be doing. Even if the man is not involved in the child's life, you find out he has a child, but yeah, I don't deal with her. I don't deal with the mom. She's this and this and this. What I did was... Asked him, can he go get her? Bring her here. I want you to bond with her. I want you to be involved with her. Bring her around. Now, I'm not saying he wasn't in her life. I'm saying he didn't bring her around me. I Because I loved this man at the time, that's what I chose to do. We as women are supposed to be doing that. And I say this because if you love him, you, you can't, you cannot not like his child. Come on. If you love her, you cannot include her children. Her children is with her. You got to figure it out. Because one day you may have a child, a child with this man or this woman. So are you going to do the favoritism? Were you going to just do for your child and leave the other children out? And that's rude. So what I chose to do was include him, to include to be in his child's life by asking him to bring her around so we could be as a family. And I'm showing him that I'm available because I might have a child by this man. And what if we don't work? I wouldn't want no one to do my child like this. So even if the woman, me and the woman don't ever get on because I've never met the mother. I've never had no problems with her either. And that was perfect for me because I'm not a messy person. And so I never met the woman, but we never had any issues. We had never had any problems. I never exchanged words with her. You know, I. that's how it should be. Even if the woman never talked to me, that's not my problem. I want to make things work. This is how we should be. It shouldn't be no bickering. I don't like the other mother. You know, I don't like because the mother had children and I don't want all that and I don't want to deal with another woman and I don't want all that. When you're involved in a man's life or a woman's life, you have to deal with those parents. Now, you could be the one that's an, the adult about it or you could be the petty one. And what I chose was to be the adult. And thank God this went well because I didn't have any issues. Now, what I did have an issue with is <laughs> my son's dad, you know, some dads kind of like put their children before you. You know, he had an attitude like, you know, looking at her like I'm mistreating her or doing anything, you know. That type of thing, which I thought was the craziest thing. I included your child in my life, and now you're treating her as if I'm you're better than me. I don't know what the game was, but it was kind of weird. You have you have some men that act a little funny about their children. He was kind of like that. That's understandable. But it was the craziest, the stupidest thing I've ever seen because I included and invited. I'm This was my idea, but you're making a big deal about it. And then later on, um, I started noticing when his child started coming around. And at the time I had my daughter, he would start making a difference in the children. And you know that... My daughter played with her. He's watching to make sure my daughter's not mistreating her. And my daughter wasn't a wild kid. She's very loving and caring and affectionate kid. But he seemed to have made a big deal out of things. And so what I would do is 
you know, just reassure him that it's nothing wrong. I know my daughter is way older than her, and I understand, but that's not happening. So what I did was try to keep peace. Now, let me tell you something. When you try to keep peace and there's still an issue, now you got to figure out a way around it. So I think that what I started doing was when my daughter go see her dad, then I would include to bring his daughter over. And then just not, you know, and it's sad you have to do that, but I'm a peacemaker. And you should still be too. You just find another way around it. So now, since you have a problem, her and my daughter playing, and you're the only one with the issue, the kids are playing, and they're good, but you're having a problem. I just start letting my daughter just come when she's not here. You see? So, when, if that's not working, and you're still making the issue, now he started talking down on my daughter. So I come to find out, he has a problem with my child. So now it's time to rethink this situation. This is not going to work because I'm not going to keep my daughter away. I'm not, you know, I come to find out that he had a problem with the dad. So I guess here we go. The, the, the My daughter's connected to the dad. So since you don't like the dad, you're having a problem with my daughter. And here we go. So now I got to rethink this situation. Is this really what I want to deal with? And so what I did was I, I ended up leaving because it was getting so bad to where it was trying to get violent. And it was all behind. He was jealous of the father. And it was really sad because I thought only women do that. Not men. But you'll be amazed how some men are jealous of your children. And, and, and he was jealous of the fact that my daughter's dad and I had a great relationship far as my daughter. We would just talk about my daughter and we would just keep our house on the same page, you know, to help her. But when I got with this guy, it, it, it just destroyed everything. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you going through that. Some of the men give you a, a, a problem about your children as well so that's why I, I, I wanted to talk about this because you are the peacemaker it don't matter if the if the woman is, don't like you and she's giving you a hard time and and the uh you know you you're having problems you find a way to go around it because you're the peacemaker you know you can't control what nobody do you can only control you and that's what I did. So eventually, I just got out of the, the marriage because it just was no peace, you know. And I'm not going to fight about children. My children love you, but you have a problem. It's the, it's the pettiest and childish thing I've ever seen. And I'm trying to tell you, there's no way around it. You got to learn how to dick co-parent. Even if it don't work, then you got to make a decision. Do you want to keep dealing with this? Am I going to get out of this? Or I'm going to keep playing these games. So I decided to get out of it. Um, he got married again. And I chose to be the adult once again. And for 18 years, the Lord had me to keep my mouth closed. You know, don't bicker, don't call, saying where's his clothes at. See, that's a game. I learned that a long time ago with my daughter's dad. I would send her clothes. He wouldn't bring it back. I would have to call over there. And it made it look like I'm trying to start and I'm drama. When in reality, it's him keeping the clothes on purpose so I can call. Why do we fall in that? So what I learned in this round with my son, they were keeping his clothes. Why? They're girls at his house. Why are you keeping a boy's clothes when you have all girls? I can't understand, but I guess girls wear boys' clothes too. I don't know, but they were wearing his stuff. And the Lord said, 
Latanya, why don't you just go to um, the Goodwill and buy his clothes? And when he goes there, and I bought nice clothes. These were name brand clothes, but they were from Goodwill. Now, don't downplay Goodwill because you can find name brand clothes be a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, four dollars. And that's what I did. So when he left, I kept his good clothes with me. And when he would go visit his dad, I would send him name brand Goodwill clothes. And he would still look good. You can't tell. So when he leave them behind, I'm good. See, you got to find a way around pettiness. Because you're going to be... In a, you're going to be in a marriage or a relationship where there's another woman before you and you got to be able to deal with it. You got to be able to deal with it. And, and you got to be able to handle whatever's being dished out. And you got to keep going. And you got to keep your mouth closed. And you can't go back and forth. If, if he... I got so many calls where... He would call me. It was like the opposite. It was like I was the male and he was the female. And he would call me with petty things to argue. And it was so bad that he put it in the child support order that I have to talk to him. So that means when he would call me with the pettiness, I had to answer my phone. This is how he set it up. Set it up. I would have to answer his phone to talk to him. And then when I wouldn't do the pettiness or the arguing and things, he would tell the judge, I don't communicate. And I could possibly go to jail. So I had to deal with that. I had to find ways to just sit on the phone and, and just, you know, deal with it. You know, and I'm, yeah, I sound like a fool. I sound like an idiot for 18 years. But I'm at peace. Look at my son's 20 now. I don't have to talk to him. I don't have to deal with him at all. And I'm good. And yes, it's hard. I can never tell you it's not hard. But it's like, I was the one, the peacemaker. And he was the woman who was petty all the time. And, and... You know, I know it's hard, but you have to find ways to co-parent. If the woman is popping up, she's always calling and bickering, you stay out of it. You be the backbone, you be praying. Because I'm telling you, I was a praying sister all those years, and God will handle it. You stay out of it. And when she's not around, you are ministering to your husband or your boyfriend or whatever the case may be. And you're showing him ways to handle it. Okay, she's saying that you're keeping the clothes. All right, let's just buy clothes for here and everything he need here. Get his toothbrush, get his all his stuff he need here. Let's just buy for here. And then she keeps everything over there. And that way, all you do is just pick up the child. He don't bring nothing. You buy his favorite toys for your house. You have to find ways to keep peace. If the woman is constantly an issue, if the man is constantly an issue, you might want to put a restraining order. All you do is deal with the kid. I don't know. A restraining order that she can't come near the home. You guys meet somewhere else. If that's an issue, you don't want to know where you stay. You don't want him to know where you stay. Find a place to meet. Keep your lips closed. Don't say nothing. You are always looking for ways to find ways to shut it down. It's ridiculous to be arguing. I know you still love each other. I know there could still be a connection. But if it was meant for you guys to be together, you would be together. Let it go. You have to forgive them. You have to move on. You have to keep going or you will constantly be in that rut. Do not continue having sex with them. Do not continue flirting. My rule was 
when we talk on the phone, if it's about the child, nothing else. We're not reminiscing on when we were together. We're not talking about when we miss each other. We are strict. You keep your mouth closed. If they want to talk about their feelings and they miss you, you keep your mouth closed and you change, switch the subject back to the child. That was my rule. And I trained both of them like that. Because when your next person come in your life, you don't want to have that. I'm telling you, it's going to get you in trouble. Because that person feels like they can call whenever they want. They can flirt with you in their face. They can be disrespectful to the new person in your life. And that could be the right woman. That could be the right man for you. And you're messing it up by letting this ex be disrespectful be just because you have a child. You know, that there are men that have kids and ladies that have children with you just to keep connected in your life. And they're going to mess up anything you have that's happy. So that's called, I call it training them. When you talk to them only about the child, and I know you may have feelings too, don't you fall for it. Keep your mouth closed. Let it go. Even if you still have feelings, you need to move on. Find a new way of doing things. Strictly child. Find you a backup. You got somewhere to go. You want to go on a date. You don't need to be calling them. Say, hey, hey can you watch them while I go on a date? You know that's a no-no. You know that's messy. You know that's going to stir up things. Find you a backup babysitter. You are always finding ways to keep peace. If it's problems about you can't get their stuff back, they keeping the clothes, start buying stuff and talk to them about it. Hey, from now on, you buy clothes for over there. From now on, I buy clothes. If that won't work, and now your kid looking like a bum when they come back, because I've done that. My son came home one summer. I had bought him some cheap shoes because my son grew so fast at the time, and, you know, I just couldn't keep up. So I bought him some polo shoes, canvas shoes. And he refused to buy him anything. He's so furious at me. He refused to buy my son. My son wore them shoes out till the sole came out. I didn't know he was that hard on shoes. But he refused to buy. I pay child support. Well, if he's there with you for the summer and you see that he wore his shoes out, why wouldn't you want to buy him a pair of shoes? Well, my son went the whole summer with the bottom sole, he didn't wore it out. I don't know what he was doing with them shoes. But he wore them out to where the sole. And he refused to buy him some shoes. Because he paid child support. Well, he could have easily called me and said I, I would have sent them some shoes. And I, my son said he wanted to call, but he told him don't. Don't. So you have to find ways to go around the drama. If you see that they're doing and playing games, do not try your best not to call them going off. Figure out a solution. And if you're seeing that your child is looking balmy with them, go to the Goodwill. Go to a boutique and buy up some nice, just some t-shirt and jeans or t-shirt and shorts and send them on over there because there are parents that are ignorant like that they won't buy the kid nothing they so mad at you I went through that you know all those years he was with my son his whole summer was drilling me what I'm doing with the child support hit that like button if you guys go through that all those years, and he didn't spend no time with him. He didn't teach him nothing. You know, my son was going going through in school. He didn't teach him anything. He didn't help him. I would send work. I would send workbooks because my son was having problems. I'm like, okay, his, his wife is a teacher. I'm going to send this workbook and see if she'll, you know, help him. 
Nobody did nothing. This is vacation time. Okay, so you're telling me for the whole summer it's playtime and if he needs struggling with something, y'all not going to help him and she's supposed to be a teacher? Okay. But I would get calls saying he don't know this, he don't know that. Okay, what are you doing? I couldn't understand this man supposed to be so smart and intelligent. You mean to tell me if he having problems learning how to count money, you're not going to help him? You're going to call me saying he don't know how to count money? But you, you're not going to teach him? You're calling me, throwing it in my face? This is what I went through. Now, I thought women did this, but men do it too. We shouldn't be the petty one calling other parents over petty stuff. If you're a woman and you're doing this, please stop. It's not going to make him want you. I know you miss him. I never wanted to be that woman. And I'm telling you, stop. Make peace. And while I can never understand why women would sit here and not let the child see the father. He wants to keep the child for the whole summer and you won't? Because you're still mad because he don't want you? Girl, if you don't let that man keep that child for the whole summer and you get a life, why? Why do we do that? Why won't you let him go and you get a life? Get yourself together. That's time for you. I will work. Man, when my son will go every summer, I'll be working hard, all kind of hours, making all kind of money. I will go on trips myself. I will do things myself. That's my time. I would never. And now, unless the man is abusive and he's beating on the child or the child's being sexually molested, I can understand that. But because you're mad at him? You still want him? You mad that he has a good wife? You mad at her because she has a good woman and you won't take the kid? Come on, y'all. We got to do better. We got a lot of generations running around here hurt because they don't have fathers in their lives. They don't have mothers in their lives. Because we're bitter and we're angry at the missing parent. When the missing parent is trying to be in his life, even though he got someone else, that's not your business. Take your break. Stop it. Don't you want a break? Don't you want to move on? Isn't there dreams and visions and, and, and heart's desires you have? Let the child visit the father and get yourself together. I can't work because I don't have a babysitter. That's your answer right there. But you're so bitter and angry you won't let him see the child. Why? Hit that like button if this helped you. Make sure you like to be a blessing and subscribe to not miss another video and share to be a blessing to help someone else. If this was not for you and you know someone going through this or you, you're seeing a lot of women and men doing this, this is about the child. This is not about us anymore. The relationship did not work. This is about the child, not you anymore. It's not about y'all anymore. Let it go today. Forgive today. Let the child enjoy both of their parents today. And sometimes you can do family trips for the children's sake. It's not about us anymore. When our marriage and our relationship does not work with that person, we should still try to get along for the child's sake. Pray that this blessed and helped someone today. 
you guys have an amazing Monday. God bless you. Bye.